Welcome to the Radiology Review Podcast, your on-the-go source for radiology education with your host, Dr. Matt Covington, a board-certified radiologist. Please follow the podcast on Twitter at RadRevPodcast. Send emails to theradiologyreview at gmail.com or visit the website theradiologyreview.com. The key with the Geiger-Muller counter is these have really high sensitivity and are used more to detect contamination. So you're talking about low levels of radiation with a Geiger-Muller counter. With a other ion chamber like a QD pi, you're talking about really high levels of radiation. Neither can tell the difference between different types of radiation or different energies. It just can tell that, hey, there's radiation here. On these types of detectors, there's several things you need to remember in terms of quality control. Daily for a Geiger-Muller counter is battery checks. Make sure that the battery works. Daily constancy test wherein you measure the count rate sensitivity. And what you do is generally hold it up to a long-lived radiation source such as cesium-137 that is often attached to the Geiger-Muller counter itself. You should also perform a daily background count rate, which is measured in an area remote from radioactive sources, so don't do this in the hot lab, but get it out in the general area, and confirm that the survey meter is not contaminated. So if you go in the patient waiting area and this thing is kicking off a lot of radiation, hopefully you didn't have a major spill out where patients are waiting. More likely you've contaminated your probe, and that's the way to check for it. Also, installation annually or after repair, you need to calibrate the accuracy, which is determined by using a long-lived radioactive source, again often cesium-137, but in this case it's been validated. Remember that these can give you a millirem per hour reading, but it doesn't tell you the energy of the radiation that it's detecting. For QC for a well counter, You need to do daily calibration, which is typically performed with cesium-137. Remember, a well counter is essentially a photomultiplier tube unit, similar to a gamma camera, but it's just one unit, and you have the ability to drop radiation inside of this well. So it has really high geometric efficiency. This type of detector is indirect conversion of radiation to light via scintillation, okay? And then the light gives a source through electrons that the system detects. So for this, again, you do daily calibration. In this case, you are able to separate energies, so you want to make sure when you're calibrating that you center it around the photo peak of cesium, which you don't need to memorize for the exam, I don't think, but it's 662 keV, just so you know. Also, installation annual and repair for a well counter or thyroid probe. You need to measure the efficiency, or you can also think of this as sensitivity, and your day-to-day counts on this should be within 10%. If not, you need to recalibrate the instrument. You all know about gamma cameras. For the quality control for a gamma camera daily, you have to do a uniformity test. So what you do is either image a cobalt 57 flood source, or you can do it with a technetium 99M source to ensure that the image is uniform. Okay, this is a flood image. I would remember cobalt 57. There's a technetium alternative in this test, the uniformity of the image. If you have non-uniformity, meaning one area looks brighter or absent, then you have something wrong. Non-uniformity can be a problem with the photomultiplier tube, or it can be a problem with your collimator. For a gamma camera weekly, you need to measure the spatial resolution and linearity. And to do this, you use a four-quadrant bar phantom. If you haven't seen what these look like and what the images look like, make sure and look it up. For spatial resolution, you identify the quadrant in the image that has the smallest detectable lines, okay? And that gives you your spatial resolution. For linearity, you want to look and make sure that the lines look straight and not otherwise. Remember that when you do a flood image with technetium, you're using a point source that you hold away some distance from the gamma camera so that the counts shower down evenly across the face of the detector. If you use a cobalt source, that's a sheet that just lies flat directly on the detector, and this gets into the difference between intrinsic and extrinsic resolution. Extrinsic spatial resolution is the resolution of the system when you have the collimator on it. I remember extrinsic resolution 
by thinking about the radiation source being more external to the gamma camera because you have the collimator in between the gamma camera and the source. Intrinsic resolution has no collimator and you're seeing purely the performance of the gamma camera itself. Let's talk about dose calibrators. Dose calibrator is a gas field detector. Okay, it is not a photomultiplier tube scintillation based detection like a well counter, but you actually have gas in there that has ion pairs that form. A dose calibrator has optimal geometric efficiency, but it cannot separate between types of energies like you can with a well counter. You can remember that if you remember that a well counter is a scintillation based detector similar to a gamma camera that has a photomultiplier tube because you know that these gamma camera systems can distinguish between different energies from isotopes and you use that ability to discriminate between energies to improve your spatial resolution which gets into the full width half maximum. We'll get back to that, but first, simply remember for now that a dose calibrator cannot separate between types of energies. Therefore, the technologist has to tell the dose calibrator what radioisotope they want to measure, and there are literally buttons on there that you push for each different type of isotope. A dose calibrator is good at determining the radiation dose. In terms of dose calibrator quality control testing, you definitely need to have these down really well. So daily, you do the constant C test, okay? You are constantly testing constant C, so that means daily. This test is performed at installation and daily thereafter, and this is a measure of precision. For this, you typically use cesium-137, which has a 30-year half-life, which therefore yields very reproducible measurements, and you measure this every day on all all of the different isotope settings that you are likely to use. You place this cesium-137 source in the calibrator, measure and record the value, and compare with recent values to determine the constancy of your system. Every quarter you need to do the linearity test, and for this test you prove that the calibrator can measure sources at radiation levels you are likely to encounter, therefore you need to do this from the microcurie into the millicurie range. There's a few options on how to do this. One of these is to take a lot of technetium 99M, maybe up to 300 millicuries, measure this at baseline, and then continue to measure at regular intervals for up to 48 hours. And as that technetium decays, you look and see if the measurements you get follow the predicted decay of technetium and therefore determine the linearity of your dose calibrator. A disadvantage of this is that it takes 48 hours and is fairly labor intensive. Another option is to take a single high activity technetium source, measure it, and then put successive lead shielding around that source and measure it with successively increasing shielding and see if the measurements you get are in line with the progressive increase in shielding that you apply to the system. Both of these will give you linearity evaluation. Annually test accuracy. The key to this is to remember the A with the A. Okay, so you're constantly testing constancy, so that's daily. Annually, you're testing accuracy. Both start with an A. This test shows that the calibrator gives you the correct readings throughout the entire energy scale. You know, it's honestly surprised me you only have to do this annually, but I guess it makes sense that at installation and then every year, you do a test and prove that it is accurately measuring the dose of a standard radioisotope that is designed for this type of thing. And then once you've established that it is accurate, every single day from that point on you check to make sure that it's constant. So that makes me feel better about it, that you get an accurate measurement, then every single day constantly you're testing the constancy to make sure it doesn't vary. And if you show every day that you have constant values, then you also know that you're maintaining the accuracy of the system. And every year you then have to go back and prove that yes, this is actually still accurate, although you should already know it will be because you've been constantly testing the constancy. Okay, let's leave that. Then at installation and repair and anytime you do anything major to this system, you have to test the geometry. And this shows that you get the same readings 
reading, no matter how you put the sample into the system, you can have a very large amount of radioactivity in a very small amount of fluid or a very small amount of radioactivity in a large amount of fluid, and you can see how geometrically inside the detector that will look different. But if the system's working well, you should still get a good measurement. So one way to test this is take activity in a very small amount of water and then progressively dilute it to a larger amount of water and make sure that that is not actually changing the radiation reading because all you're doing is adding water to the system, but you are changing the geometry. For any of these measures, if you have a deviation of greater than 10%, then you are obligated to record that value and then note the repair or recalibration or whatever fix you did and then retest, make sure you're now in the expected range and then go forward from there. Content of this podcast is provided for informal educational purposes only for radiology trainees and radiologists. Medical practitioners, please make your own independent assessment before suggesting a diagnosis or recommending any course of treatment. This podcast should not be used for self-diagnosis or self-treatment and is not a substitute for independent professional medical care. Please consult your own physician regarding any diagnosis, imaging interpretation, or course of treatment. 